In this video, I'm gonna be deep cleaning the kitchen and I'm gonna be getting a little help from Kevin as well. Uh, Kevin is in charge of the appliances. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just that when we bought them, when we renovated this kitchen and we bought the appliances, he seemed to know how to take care of the stainless steel and how to do an excellent job cleaning the top of the stove. So if the stove is just a little dirty, then of course I'll wipe it off. But it, when it needs to be like really uh, deep cleaned, uh, then I'll let him do it. So first, we're gonna watch him deep clean um, the stove top and uh, the refrigerator and then I'll be back. All right, for the stove and the refrigerator, the stainless steel uh, refrigerator and the stainless steel on the stove and the stainless steel on the hood, I use the stainless steel wipes through the Wyman uh, stainless, stainless steel wipes. Uh, that's what we always use. Um, for the hood over the stove, sometimes it gets a little grease on it and you, you don't want to do the stainless steel wipes with the grease on it. So to cut that grease a little bit, I do the disinfecting wipes first. And then for the stove top, the glass stove top, if it's really bad off, I'll use this uh, glass cooktop polish. It's um, it's almost like um, like car wax, like you put on your car. It's got that kind of consistency to it. It's like a white stuff you let dry. And most of the time we just use this spray on a cooktop cleaner. And I have a razor blade for scraping off uh, the bigger stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is, the, since I have to get the grease cut first, I'm gonna get these Clorox wipes first. And it usually tends to get grease right on the top and, you, and it's, it's even hard to, to hold it. But the stainless steel polish really is not made for like grease. It's literally just to polish up the stainless steel. So I, I try to cut some of the grease with one of these and I can feel it's, it's gotten a little sticky um, since the last time I did it. But make sure you get the sides. the lip underneath too. So you gotta let that dry. So what I do next, it, it may seem a little silly, but I take one paper towel and I just take the cooktop spray and just spray it really quick. This just lets me know what areas I need to actually get the razor blade on. Because the bad thing about, I love the flat top count of stove tops, I really do. But the bad thing is if anything splashes, if you're making, um, macaroni or potatoes or anything like that anything that splashes off the pan you can see it leaves this ring i don't know how well you can see it in you the can video see it. yeah you can um it leaves this ring of like crud and it gets stuck to it and uh, what i do is, is take this razor blade and don't put it straight up and down and don't lay it flat it's kind of at an angle you can see the brown cooked on crud and I just take my paper towel that I just wiped it off with and just wipe it off a blade and some people worry that this is going to scratch it up unless you're really like putting a point into it I'm laying it fairly flat like at a maybe a 45 degree angle and just scraping it it's it's not going to scratch anything or at least it, it's never on ours and matter of fact that's this is how they recommend it to get off that kind of stuff is a razor blade so for years, we had a regular stove with the regular burners and- Yeah, with the little uh, the metal trays. Yeah, inside. the trays in the bottom. So do you like this better? I do because those trays, you can never, ever, ever get them clean. No. Even when you replace the trays, the little ring around the, the hole gets brown and filthy and you can't just scrape it off. Right. I mean, it's just, there's no way to get it off. Whereas this, I can pretty much get this to 100% right. every time. I think as far as cooking though, it cooks the same. Yeah, Honestly. it cooks about the same. Yeah. yeah, I think it does. This one, this is a model. I don't know if I'd get this model again. This is a Samsung. Yeah, and it works good. It's a, it's a convection oven. So we want, I wanted a convection oven and we never use it. So, you know, whatever. Um, let's see if there's any other spots in here. Well, I'm really good about uh, turning the convection oven on. By accident. <laughs> By accident. Convection oven really does heat and cooks faster but um you it's just something right there yeah it's just something we don't we just don't use a lot um 
You know, even when we do bake, we don't we don't really use the convection stuff too much. I think I got it pretty good. You gotta kinda take your fingers and just rub on it to see if there's any bumpy parts. And you can see it still leaves a little film on there. Okay. So now I am gonna end up using the polish a little bit because the that's pretty uh it's pretty ground in. So I just take this polish and just squirt a little bit, especially around the bad areas. And let me get a paper towel. I got a few paper towels out, but not enough. And it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of like car wax. If you ever waxed your car with this stuff, with the turtle wax, it's kind of like that. So you wouldn't use this on the stainless part at all? No, you just use it on the glass part. So you let this sit and dry. And you can see how much dirt just comes oh, up wow. without just that little bit of scrubbing. So you let that dry. So you go back to the hood now or what? Yeah, I can go ahead and do the stainless steel part. And we don't do this all the time. I think Tammy said that we, this is like the, when we do a really deep clean. Well, when we're gonna have like company over for Christmas. <laughs> this is the last one in there and it's so dry. It's really good. So I got a new one I opened up. I'm gonna make sure there's some liquid in there. I hate getting the first like 10 of these out of there. All those wipes are like that. Yeah, and, and you can't get in the middle, which is where they want you to get it. So you kind of have to get it from the outside. So the stainless steel wipes are just really literally just wipes. And these are gonna be kind of like what I just did with that wax stuff. You're gonna rub it on. It's like a polishing agent. And it's gonna leave this white film on it. And you're gonna leave that to dry. So you wax on and wax, wax on. Wax on and wax on. <laughs> polish on, polish off. That's exactly what you're doing. Now that the display for the oven, normally we just get that with Windex or you can get it with a Clorox wipe or something like that. Do you that. get the handles and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, get the whole front. No, the little knobs on here. Yeah, those. If they're dirty, I will usually. I, usually they kind of polish themselves because you're touching them all the time. And then get the, the handle really good. Open the front right there. I'm not pushing it really, I'm just kind of rubbing it on. Let me get another one for the refrigerator. Ah. And you can see how it's filming up on the stove really good. Mm -hmm. The refrigerator is where you get all the fingerprints. But it's not as bad for us because we don't have little kids. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to do this more often if we had little kids. We do have Ashley though. <laughs> and you notice I don't have any magnets on the refrigerator and that's just because I like I like a clean look. I think um, a lot of people when they see our um, our kitchen, they think, oh, it's, it's so clean and um, neat. And that's true, but I think it adds to the look by just not having a lot of, of stuff sitting around. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, when we had kids in school, I would keep their school lunch calendar on the refrigerator. I had a school countdown where it would say, um, like 45 days left of school and I would have like art projects or whatever so when they were little I did have things like that but now um, uh, nowadays it's just I like the the look of it being clean and I do think it makes the kitchen look cleaner to not have anything like that on there so you have to let that sit so too. you just let it dry and, and uh, I'll be back when it's all dried up okay so you can see it's got a really good film on it and basically you just take a dry paper towel. That's where the fun starts. Cause you gotta just go in little circles as I always did it. It won't be 100% just yet, so. You want to, you can 
and get a wet paper towel and get this up. I usually just kind of get as much as I can. I use my spray. You have to admit, we spend more time cleaning this stove than we did our other one. Yeah, but we, the other one you could never get You clean. couldn't get it clean, so it was like pointless. I mean, if you yeah. really wanted to get that stove clean, you'd probably spend 10 times longer cleaning yeah. it than cleaning this. And if you remember too, anytime we wanted to clean those like inserts, you, we just had to buy new ones. No, oh, yeah, you just had to buy new ones. Because it was so bad. Use one to wipe it off and then you use another one to polish. And you can see it still, even then, it still leaves us a little bit yeah, I thought around there. Mm -hmm. And it usually comes off the next time we clean and use the spray, it'll come off when we do that. So it never gets 100%, it's, it gets like really good and shiny. But these little spots like that, next time you cook, I don't know, maybe it's the heat kind of picks them off or something, I don't know. But it's as clean as it's gonna get. So then stainless steel, just gonna see a little. stainless steel, you're just gonna take a lot of um, paper towel, a cloth, whatever you want to, and you're just gonna wipe all the stuff off, the turn white. Feel the difference, it feels uh, Slicker. <laughs> I recommend not putting your hands on the stove when you're cleaning these knobs because when you actually turn one on, your hand, <laughs> your hand gets really hot. <laughs> yes, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, so that's all cleaned up. You just do the rest of it. It just takes one for the stove, paper towel. One for the stove, one for the refrigerator. That's what I usually do. So the first thing I want to do now that the stove top is clean, I want to uh, get in the stove and I would like to try to clean the inside of this glass. I have not done it before and I want you to see how dirty it is. Um, it's, it's pretty dirty because it has not been done before. So this is how it looks. Um, and it is on the outside. I, I don't know if there's any between the glass or not, but I know it's on the outside. So I have this mat in here and I'm going to clean it, but I'm going to start on the door first and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to try to get it clean. So I watched a man on YouTube. I looked up a YouTube video, how to clean the glass on the stove and he showed that you could use baking soda and water and you pour your baking soda into a bowl and i'm just gonna wing it and just pour a little bit of time and you add a little bit of water and you're gonna turn this into like a paste so let's see i think i want a little bit more water than that because you want it to be like it's, I mean, it is pasty, but I want it a little, a little thinner than that. Oh, that looks good right there. So now, um, the guy on the YouTube video said to put this on the door and to put it on kind of thick and to let it sit for half an hour. So I have this and I'm, I will probably have to make more because uh, that doesn't look like it's gonna cover much. But I'm gonna pour it on that door. Yeah, I'm gonna need to make a lot more than this. But I, did, I didn't know how much it would cover. And I'm gonna put it on kind of thick too.
So I'm gonna make sure I get in those grooves. Okay. So I'm gonna make another batch and keep putting this on until it's covered. this mat out of here and put it up on my counter and I always get questions about this so I will leave a link to this below it has been absolutely wonderful this is a wet uh, a wet paper towel this has been uh, just the, the best thing that we've ever bought <laughs> uh, for the stove it uh, we bought it at Bed Bath and Beyond, but you can find them on Amazon. Um, I don't know if it was more expensive at Bed Bath and Beyond, but we have had this caked with um, sticky, uh, juicy things, uh, syrupy things, uh, with pizza, cheese, and everything. And as you can see, it comes right off, but it saves the bottom of your oven from getting um, just horrific, from that this being on the bottom. And trust me, that mat has been a lot worse. So that was a very easy job. So now I'm gonna clean the top of the refrigerator, which you can probably tell never gets clean. <laughs> it's, uh, it is uh, pretty dusty up here. So I'm just using the Miss Myers uh, cleaner for this. And there are lots of, there's cobwebs up here. <laughs> it's not as bad as um, I have seen it in the past. And I don't know that I'll be able to get all the way to the back because this, there's, there's not much room here and I'm not tall enough. Now Kevin would be able to reach probably, but it's hard for my arm to even fit under there. But I'm going to get it the best I can. Our, um, our old house uh, had a lot more room above the cabinet. It wasn't, it was like half the size of this. So you could actually sit things on top of the refrigerator. But I think it, it's cleaner looking if you can keep from putting stuff up there, from using that as storage. I know some people have to use it as storage. We had to have, we had to use it as storage in our old house, but if you can hide the stuff, it's better just because it does look cleaner if you don't have to have that on there. So that was pretty gross. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean with one of these Swiffer dry uh, cloths. Uh, you just put it on the end of your Swiffer and uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do while I'm putting it on there. Uh, we have very high ceilings. I don't know if other people have to do this or not, but because our ceilings are high, uh, you get cobwebs. And I would assume everyone gets cobwebs, uh, but we get cobwebs. And so I like to use one of these dry cloths to get the cobwebs off of the ceiling. And I don't know if the cobwebs are, are gonna actually show through on the camera, but I can at least show you how I go about getting them down. I don't know that you'll be able to see what I'm getting here, but I can definitely see little cobwebs right here.
is how bad it was. So for this video, I've already done a video where I showed you what I do every single week. So every single week, I do, for example, the kitchen floor. Uh, so you will not see me do the kitchen floor in this video because the, this video is um, to show you things that I do not do every week. So something that I do not do every week is clean these walls. And I absolutely love the tile. I, I'm so glad we did it. I don't regret it at all. It is not hard to maintain. I, I honestly rarely have to even worry about wiping it off. Uh, I am today because I'm deep cleaning, but it's not something that I that I do very often. Um, it, it, it stays relatively clean. I think everyone would be surprised. Uh, at, at our the last house we lived at, we never did have a backsplash. We just had um, the uh, drywall, just painted drywall, and uh, then behind the stove, we had like a piece of metal that you put behind the stove, uh, but we never did have tile. Um, and I'm so glad that we decided to put it in here because I really like it. So I never, I, I never pull out this, um, the Keurig or, um, now this does get clean. I'm just gonna wipe it while I have it here, but, I'm gonna wipe off all the counters on the tops and I'm going to wipe off the tile because it's, I'm sure it needs it. And I'm using the Clorox wipes. This is just the regular Clorox disinfecting wipes, which if you watch the weekly clean or my favorites, um, my cleaning favorites video, you'll know I absolutely love these. one of those times where the dual action wipes come in handy because I'm going to have to use a uh, the abrasive side, the scrubby side uh, for this. It's not too bad. I got a lot of it off with the other one, but there's still, it will be a lot less scrubbing on my part. It'll take a lot less effort 
with the um, with the abrasive side. That's why I, I like to keep both uh, because they they really do come in handy. but it's a non-abrasive scrub pad. So I'm going to see if this works. I'm gonna set my bowl of water right there. Hopefully this works. If it didn't work, then at least this got a, a little bath. That did not work for me. That uh, did not work for me at all. Like it worked for the guy on YouTube. It is getting stuff off there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is getting stuff off. For me as well as it did for the guy on YouTube. However, it did take some of it off. He was, uh, on his video, he was trying to show you how you could do it without using harsh chemicals. And so I thought, well, this is a way that I can clean this without having to buy anything without, you know, I, I was using something that I had in the house. So clearly that did not work for us, <laughs> for me. But uh, maybe I did it wrong. I mean, you can see I'm, I'm getting some stuff off, but it's it still is it still is pretty bad on there. And I don't know that I would ever get it perfect. But it's better than it was, and it makes me feel good uh, that I got it a little bit cleaner. So the last thing I plan to do in this video, we have. Um, many drawers in the kitchen, but for some reason, our utensil drawer collects um, lint and, well, not just lint, but like little, like little food crumbs. I, I think it's because we're just, we're in it all the time. We're in the middle of cooking or making a sandwich or whatever. We open up the drawer to get um, a fork out or a knife or whatever, and you don't realize that the little crumbs fall in the drawer. And your, your utensil drawer should be the cleanest drawer in your kitchen um, because you eat off those. You, you pull them out and you immediately start eating with them. So, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take everything out of the utensil drawer. I'm going to, I actually have my vacuum cleaner in here because I'm going to vacuum out the drawer, but then I'm going to use my wipes and I'm going to also go over it with a wipe because I do use the vacuum. The vacuum touches things. The end of the vacuum, it, I wouldn't consider sanitary either. So, but what I can do is I can quickly get the crumbs out with the vacuum cleaner and then uh, kind of uh, disinfect using the wipes. So 
The refrigerator is a, um, a bigger job. I do want to uh, clean the refrigerator out and the freezer and um, just kind of go through everything, make sure the dates are all good, which I think it is because it hasn't been that long since I, I did that. But um, I'm gonna go through that and clean that, but I'm gonna be doing that in a separate video. So this is the last thing I'm gonna do in this. And if, it, if you, there's something like, that you didn't see in this video that you thought should be in here, it's probably because I do that during my weekly cleaning. You know, cleaning out the sink, cleaning the floors, doing the dishes, putting the dishes up, things like that. That's something that I do every week. What I tried to show you, like I said in this video, was things that you're not gonna see, that I'm not gonna do all the time. I definitely don't clean those tiles off all the time. So I'm gonna start cleaning out this drawer and then I'll catch you in the next video.